Poultry farming has become a very lucrative business and today I have Mr. Chickens, Mr. Farmer, Mr. Dr. Daniel Masava, a proud medical doctor but and now poultry farmer. a poultry farmer, a proud farmer based here at his farm. We are not going to go into details but he's doing amazing work. Now I know a lot of you guys out there want to start up a chicken farm and that's exactly what Dr. Daniel Masaba is actually going to explain to us. But if you're new here please do ensure that you subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on X at Dennis Duke UG. Dr. Daniel. Yes please. Glad to have you again. Thank you. We watched your story of how you transformed from being a doctor, a medical doctor to be specific, uh, into a poultry farmer. Yes. Why did you choose poultry farming among many other ventures? I mean, there's rabbit farming, there is uh, cattle dairy, there is a lot. There's growing crops, but you said, no, I'm going to go into poultry farming. Let's start from there. Yeah, I'll tell you something interesting. It's not like um, there was something so special about poultry farming. Mm. At that point, it's because someone recommended it. Mm. And when I did some research about it, it felt like a viable option. It felt like, you know, something that I can personally work with. So the time that I decided to start poultry farming, I, when someone told me about it and they told me it's profitable, I went, you know, did research about it, discovered that, well, it's something that can be done. And also at that point, I felt like, you know, poultry farming is this thing that doesn't require too much land. Because for business, when it does come to business, a lot of the other farming things require a lot of land. But with chickens, you don't require too much land to do a sensible number of chickens. I was thinking to myself, well, I'll go with the alternative of poultry. So I, I can say that it was a mixture of, uh, you know, luck and, uh, you know, putting in effort to try and understand the whole thing about poultry. That's why I went with poultry. So if somebody is interested in starting a poultry farm, where and how do they start up a poultry farm? So starting a poultry farm is quite interesting, yeah? Mm. The most important thing when it does come to starting a poultry farm is that you must get the information. You must understand what you're doing, yeah? Because chickens are very sensitive. You know, they're not like uh, cows or goats or things like that, yeah? The, you know, a cow can be sick for, for quite a while. I mean, before you even realize that it is sick. Chickens, on the contrary, if you don't um, look after them very well and the chicken gets sick, in three days, you could have the entire farm gone. All the animals dead. So it's very important that you pay keen attention. So you need to make sure that you understand everything that you're doing. So the first and core principal thing when it does come to starting a poultry farm is you must gather knowledge. Gather as much knowledge as possible. The good thing is that right now, there's a lot of YouTube channels and a lot of YouTube videos of people sharing, you know, things about poultry farming. Sometimes you can physically go to places and get trained. Now, unfortunately, I don't allow people to come to my farm for training purposes because of biosecurity. For me, I, I don't want to risk it at all completely. But, you know, you can go to places and get people trained, people training you about poultry farming. You can watch my YouTube channel and things like that. That is the very first step. Another thing that I advise people to do is go and you know, have physical interactions with people who have experience in poultry farming. Some things you can get via knowledge and watching and reading things, but some things can be best passed on to you via, you know, information physically with someone who has done it. That is the first step. Now, the second step is getting money. Yeah, you need to make sure that you gather money. Mm. Now, investing in a poultry farm or any form of farm is honestly not cheap. Because unlike a lot of other businesses where you can just go and rent a shop somewhere, farms usually require land. Mm. Yeah, it's not like, you know, you just go and start something. You require land. Even if you're just going to grow crops, usually you require land, unless you're going to be renting. So, the second thing is to gather up money. Now, how can you get money to start a farm? For a lot of people, people will go and do loans to start farms. I personally don't agree with it and I, I totally don't love the idea of someone taking a loan mm. to start a farm because I feel like it's so high risk. Yeah, Taking a loan is, is a very risky thing. Yeah, And with, with businesses, farms or any other form of business, you're not sure whether it's going to succeed or not. You understand? So it makes sense for you to take a loan to expand the farm but not to start a farm. The second reason why I think it's really good that someone invests in a farm using their own money is that they give it more attention and more effort. I mean, mm. if you're save, you've saved your five, ten million and you're investing it in your farm, you don't want you to lose this money. And then you're more likely to give it your attention, your focus and everything. Once you've saved the money, you know, it has taken you two years, three years, whichever time to get that money, you're going to value it and you'll do everything that you can to ensure that the farm does succeed. So that is the second thing that I think uh, someone needs to pay a lot of attention to when they're going to start a farm. Okay. 
So after, um, how much money are we talking about uh, that somebody can raise to start up a poultry farm? Something that makes sense, something that makes business sense. Yeah, again, that's, again, that's going to be very, very, you know, subjective. For a lot of people, what makes business sense doesn't make business sense to others. I'll give you an example. Mm. I, I, I once met a, a, a friend mm. and uh, he was telling me about starting a business. And for him, if the business doesn't make $100,000 a month, it's nothing. $100,000, that's of Ugandan shillings, is like what? $370 million. It's mm. nothing. You understand? So it, it, it will depend on context. Yeah. For me personally, I, I really believe that a um, thousand birds is, uh, is a, a number to start with. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean that someone who is starting with 500 or 200 birds is not business sense. Yeah? For some people, actually, 200 birds feel like too many, too many birds to look after. Mm. For me, I feel like a thousand birds makes business sense. Because with a thousand birds, when the birds start to lay, you know, you can expect to make at least three million every month. You understand? If you do it really well, you know, the birds are not dying. Um, the birds are feeding really well. You keep your costs of production really low. And uh, the, you make sure that the birds are laying really well. So you raise them really well. You can do three million every month, yeah? With, with a thousand birds or even more. Yeah, so I feel like a thousand birds is a good enough number for you to start with. And with a thousand birds, I remember when I was starting out with my very first batch of chickens, mm. by the time the birds started to lay, I think I had put in about 33 million. Yeah, 33 million. That's the, the feed and the birds themselves. Mm. And uh, I think that included the chicken house too. You understand? So it, it takes quite an amount of money. Uh, for you to get to that point, it requires quite an amount of 33 million for a thousand birds for the birds to reach to the point where they can give you back money. It's quite an amount That's of about money. That's about 33 million. 33 million, yeah. Uh, what is that money going to be used for? Yeah, so the 33 million is literally what you put in until the birds start to lay. You understand? I want so, you to break it down. So you're going to do, do, do a lot of things. Number one, you're going to consider the chicken structure. Mm. Yeah. Number two, you're going to consider the cost of the birds themselves. A lot of the costs, by the way, are one-time costs. So the next time you're starting a project with a thousand birds, it's going to be significantly less. Yeah. So you're going to buy the birds themselves. Then you're going to buy the equipment that you're going to utilize. So that's the feeders, the drinkers, uh, you know, the heaters that you're going to use for heating. For brooding and all yeah, that. Yeah, for brooding. You know, mm. all those one-time things, making the laying boxes and stuff like that. Mm. And then the feed. The feed is going to be the biggest percentage, of course. In fact, when it does come to farms, for poultry farms, the feed takes up at least 90%. You know, between 80 and 90% of your running costs mm. are feeds. So it's, 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 it's usually a huge percentage of the cost. Okay, uh, if somebody is starting with a thousand birds, how big is the structure for them to... Uh, how, what is the dimension for the structure? Yeah, so if you're going to be keeping your birds, you see when it does come to chickens, we can keep the birds in different types of systems. Mm. Yeah, This is what we call a depleter system. And for me, my house is two floors, by the way. Okay. There's birds up and, and, and birds down. But you can also keep your chickens in one floor and also you can keep your chickens in what we call cages. Now, cages is the more expensive bit. So I think I, I, I don't need to talk about them because someone who is really broke... Let's look at somebody that is starting. Yeah, they don't have as starting, much capital. They don't have so much money. So the thing that you're going to consider is you're going to have to build a house. The, the basic calculation is consider six birds per square meter. I believe that is the easiest way for you to calculate. So if you want to do 500 birds, it's easy for you to calculate once you know that you're going to do six birds per square meter. If you want to do a thousand birds, again, it's quite easy for you to calculate. But in simple terms, for someone who wants to do a thousand birds, you will need a house that measures eight meters by 20 meters. Yeah, eight meters in width by 20 meters. Now, when it does come to chicken houses, it's really important when it does come to the technicality, the, height, the size of the house, you don't want your house to be wider than 8 meters. Because when it becomes wider than 8 meters, then, you know, you can see the open sides of our chicken house. This is where air comes in from. Now, when the house becomes so wide, the parts in the middle of the house don't get enough air and circulation. And then, you know, it starts becoming a problem. You understand? So you don't want it to be wider than 8 meters. So you can make it 8 meters and then you can make it as long as you want. I mean, on my breeder farm, I have chicken houses that are more than 200 meters long, 240 meters long. You understand? Mm. So you can make it as long as you want, but the width is very important. So for a chicken house of 1,000 birds, 8 meters by 20 meters. How do I source for chicks? So sourcing for chicks, I'll, I'll just be honest and clear. Just come to farm up. I supply with chicks <laughs> if you're in Uganda because I do supply chicks, you know, broilers and layers. Okay. But there's a lot of chick suppliers on the market. You just need to make sure that you go to a reputable supplier because the quality of the chicks is so important. So, so important. Why important? Because, because if the genes are bad, you're not going to get what you want. You know, I've seen people who go and they buy 
you know, chickens for, for eggs. They feed them the very best feeds. And then when the time reaches, it's just like you, Dennis, who does goats, you know? Mm -hmm. If you have a bad goat breed, it doesn't matter how much feed you give it, it won't reach a particular weight. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Same exact thing. When it does come to the chickens, if you don't give, if the chickens are of poor, poor quality, terrible genes, mm -hmm. they won't give you the eggs that you expect from them. Or if it is broilers, the, you, you'll be in your fifth week, sixth week, and the birds are even not hitting a single kilo. So you need to make sure that you get the correct gene and mm -hmm. the correct breed of the chickens. Let's talk about the brooding. I'm sure that is the next step. Yes. So the next thing after you've brought in chickens is what we call brooding. This is how we look after the old chicks. Okay. It's very important that you understand how to look after the old chicks. Looking after the old chicks can be quite tricky, but it's not something that can't be learned or, you know, understood. Mm -hmm. The most important thing and the things to take great care of mm -hmm. when it does come to chicken farming is number one, you need to make sure that you take care of the heating. So make sure that the house is comfortable for the chickens heating and how do you tell the chickens are comfortable you know they're not too close to each other they're not huddling together but number two they're not so separated and panting when, it, when they are panting and they're so separated it shows that the chickens are you know feeling too hot and it's not comfortable for them so you need to make sure that they, are, they have the correct heat number two you need to make sure that there is light inside the chicken house the birds need to be you know um eating day and night. You need to make sure the birds are eating day and night. Number three, you need to make sure there is consistent water being available to the birds. The drinkers need to be washed at least twice every day. Yeah. So water should be available and water should be clean. Number four, you need to make sure that the birds are vaccinated. Vaccinate the birds properly and at the correct levels. Yeah. And use the correct vaccines from the correct source, the correct way. It's important that you vaccinate the birds properly. And then number five, you need to make sure that you supply the birds with correct feed. Yeah. If the birds are not being given the correct feed, they're not going to get the weight that they require. And in the end, you're not going to get the results that you expect out of them. So exactly that's how we do our brooding. Yeah. It's about taking care of those things. You talked about vaccination. A lot of people, yesterday I posted a, a picture of me in a, in a green paper house that had been sprayed. And people were like, oh, why do you spray things? Oh, lo, lo, lo. And now you've talked about vaccination. Haven't you got people that are against vaccination? Oh, yes, that's true. I mean, even, even people are against vaccination in human beings. I mean, when COVID-19 came, people were like, don't vaccinate. Uh, when, you know, when we have campaigns against measles, polio, You'll have a lot of people who are telling you don't go and vaccinate, you know, your children. But in all honesty, it has been proven. And there is, I mean, this is not something to debate. There is obvious proof that vaccines work. For me on my farms, for example, I haven't had a single disease outbreak for very many years. Only because I vaccinate my chickens. Vaccinating your chickens provides them with some form of immunity that will prevent, you know, diseases from coming on the farm. So the potential of loss, you know, commercial loss due to not vaccinating your birds is crazy. Yeah, it's really crazy. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that people talk about is that, you know, vaccines are toxic and all these kinds of things. But in all honesty, vaccines are what are enabling us to feed. I mean, if there was no vaccines, then we wouldn't have enough chicken to feed the world because chickens will just keep dying you understand eh? mm. so in the end it's what's keeping us alive and you can't run a commercial poultry farm without using vaccines your chickens are going to die they're going to die completely so it is something that i would if some people think it's toxic i would say it's a necessary evil you know something that we have to go with mm. in order for it to be viable uh, speaking like that i mean i get a lot of confidence in you because you're a medical doctor so you know what it means exactly uh, the vaccines and all that let's talk about um at what how long do these layer chickens take before they hatch? Before they hatch or mm -hmm. before they start to lay? Before they start, or rather, to lay. I, yeah. to, I wanted to mean to lay. Yeah, so they take uh, 18 weeks. Mm. So after 18 complete weeks, your chickens should start laying. So in the 19th week, mm. your chickens should start laying. Yeah, so, uh, and they start laying, you know, in the 19th week, they'll be at about 3% and then they, it will increase. Mm. So 18 weeks is about four and a half months, mm. if you consider that a, a month has just four weeks, you understand? So in about four and a half months, you should expect your chickens to start to lay. What do I do when uh, my chickens don't start to lay within that time period? Is, does that mean there's something I've done wrong? Yes. Okay. If your chickens don't start lay mm. by the time they're 18 weeks, then you probably did one of very many things wrong. So what are those wrong things that somebody should watch out? First of all, mm. and the, actually the only thing that matters when mm. it does come to chickens mm. is the weight. You see, when, when chickens are supplied to you, the supplier should provide you with a leaflet mm. that shows the target weight for every age group. So at, at four weeks, we expect the birds to be at this weight. At five weeks, this is the weight. At six weeks, this is the weight. So if your birds are two weeks 
are not getting the weight that they're supposed to be doing, getting because you, sh you should be weighing them, you should have a weighing scale. Mm. If they're not getting that weight, then you need to make sure that you correct it. You understand? And it's probably a problem, one of three or four things. Number one, there's no f the feed is not enough or the feed is poor quality. Mm. Number two, the birds are not getting water. Number three, the birds are too compacted in a small space. Mm. So there's too much competition that some birds are feeding and others are not feeding. Or, number four, the general welfare inside the house is not good. So probably there's not enough ventilation. There's a lot of like, you know, carbon dioxide inside and the birds are not, not breathing. So, and maybe number five, the birds have been sick. But that one is quite difficult because if birds are sick, you can see them, obviously. Mm -hmm. The other four are quite easy for you to miss because you won't see it, obviously. But it will certainly show. So if you weigh your birds and they're not getting the correct weight, look among those four things and try to correct something. Okay. Uh, you talked about the right feeds. Please expound more on the feeds or feeding of uh, the, the chickens. Yeah, so feeding is something that's quite complicated because, um, I mean, it, it has a lot of science in it. Mm. And in all honesty, you can't go into detail of exactly how to mix feeds mm. on a YouTube video like this. But what you need to understand is that different birds at different age groups need different mixtures of feed and that is the most important thing and secondly you need to be very careful to give them their you know their nutrient requirements yeah give them exactly what they need yeah if you don't give them what they need you're going to be the one to miss out you're going to be the one to lose out so give them exactly what they need so give them the great quality feed don't make shortcuts i mean a lot of farmers they'll be like why wow, the price of maize is so high then they'll make shortcuts in terms of you know uh, they go and give the chickens maize brand instead of maize. So you need to make sure that you don't make shortcuts when it does come to the feed. Get good quality feed. Usually the price might be so high, so the way of getting around that might be, you know, you mixing the feed yourself. So you need to learn how to mix the feed yourself. That is quite complicated. It's not something really easy because it involves sourcing raw materials and understanding the mixtures, how many kilos to mix of each one of them. It requires a lot of maths and science, but you need to learn how to do it. I mean, those are the things that you need to go through to learn how to do it so that you cut your feed cost and ensure that you're still giving the birds something that's efficient. How important is aeration? Yeah, aeration is really important because uh, first of all the chickens are in a small space. There are too many chickens in one space. Yeah, so they need to breathe first of all. But secondly, you see where the chickens live is also where they put their droppings. So there's a lot of toxic gases, you know, coming out of there. Ammonia and sulfur and carbon monoxide. All those are toxic gases inside there. So you need to make sure that the place is open so that those gases escape. If they don't escape, they remain inside there and they cause respiratory illnesses to chickens. So if you go and visit a farmer and their chickens are consistently sick, they are consistently getting cough, one of the most likely problems is that their ventilation is problematic. Okay. Yeah. You talked about uh, vaccination, but there's something I forgot to ask. What are we uh, vaccinating against and at what stage and what are we? Maybe if you know the drugs. Yeah, there's different types of vaccines depending on the chickens and the age. Yeah, mm. I'll, I'll do for, 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 for layers mm. uh, specifically. We do a lot of vaccinations when it does come to layers. At day one, the birds will come when they are vaccinated from the hatchery. That's uh, Gumboro and um, Newcastle disease and Merex. Then at day seven, we'll give them Newcastle disease uh, vaccine. At day 10, we'll give them um, Gumboro vaccine. And then at day 14, at day 18, we'll give them Newcastle. At day 21, we'll give them Gumboro again. And then at day 28, at day 35, actually not 28, at day 35, we'll give them Newcastle. Then at week 6, we'll give them fallpox. Then at uh, week 10, we'll give them fall typhoid. Between week 10 and week 12. And then at week 16, again, we'll give them fall typhoid. And then after that, when the birds start laying, we just give them Newcastle once every month. Ah, uh, once every month. These are in injections or in, in sol uh, soluble? Each different vaccines are given in different ways. Some of them are given as injections, some of them in drinking water, some of them you can give in the eye, you know, on the beak. It depends on the vaccine. Some farmers that have started up poultry farms have closed. As a result, they claim high cost of feeding. How do I ensure that I reduce my cost of feeding? I'll tell you the honest truth. It's not high cost of feeding mm. that makes farmers to close. Mm. It's inefficiency. You understand? If your birds are not laying at the percentage that they should be laying at, mm. then you won't get what you expect. I mean, the people who, who make feeds mm. and the feeds are expensive, of course, still expect that if you use their, your feed, their feed, your birds should lay enough for you to buy the feed. You understand? Mm. So it doesn't make sense that the feed cost should be so high that it can't sustain the farm. The most important thing is making sure that the birds lay really well. So get good quality birds, 
ra feed them with good feed, raise them properly in the right way, so that when they reach laying, they, they lay properly. If birds are supposed to be laying at 95% and your birds are laying at 50%, of course you're going to close, you understand, because you're not getting enough money from the birds to feed them. So the most important thing is efficiency. Of course you can cut your feed costs by trying to mix the feed yourself, but the more important thing is making sure that the birds are efficient. And there are other ways, like for example my local chicken, I can give them skuma wiki, I can give them foods, leftovers, can't the same apply to layers chicken? You can do that, mm. but you won't get what you, want, what you need. Mm -hmm. I mean, these other things, they have nutrients, but it's a hit or miss. You understand? Mm. For chickens, with my chickens here, if I reduce the soya percentage in the food by just 2%, their production drops. You understand? Mm. They require a bit of consistency and giving them the same exact thing every time. You need to know that you, this is exactly what you're giving them mm. so that they get you the, the best results. So if you're just getting random things from outside and giving them this and giving them this, you're not going to get exactly what you want. You, it will be cheap and the birds will, will continue to lay, but you won't get exactly what you want. Let's talk about egg management. How mm. do I manage the eggs? So when it does come to eggs, you just need to make sure that, one, you collect the eggs as soon as possible. Don't leave eggs inside the chicken house. If you leave eggs inside the chicken house, the chickens are going to start pecking them and the eggs are going to break. So make sure that you remove the eggs as soon as possible. Also, make sure that you don't wash eggs. Avoid washing eggs. When eggs are washed, these eggs is easily go bad. So when you supply them to your supply, to the person you're selling them to, the eggs are going to go bad, you know, after one or two weeks of keeping them, they'll go bad really quickly. So avoid washing eggs. One of the things that I also noticed during, um, some farmers claim uh, they don't have market for their eggs. Other farmers actually have had eggs stolen at their farms. Yet, um, we know that eggs are consumed on a daily. Are they missing a point? Are they missing something? Yeah, it's all about trying to look for the market. Yeah, the thing about market is, it's not passive. You don't just sit down and, and get people buying your things. You need to be active and intentional when it does come to, to looking for market. So get outside there, look for places where people want the things. I mean, go to schools, go to hospitals, go to all kinds of places. People want these things. As long as you can do deliveries, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Try to make sure you can do deliveries. Once you identify these places, go there, look for the market, people will buy. How many chickens did you start with? I started with 800 chickens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I started with 800 chickens and I've slowly started growing. I mean, on this commercial farm right now, these are three houses that have uh, 7,500 chickens, but I also have a place, you know, not far away from here where I'm brooding. So it's a total of 10,000 chickens that I do have. But I started with just 800 chickens. Okay. So um, let's talk about the birth of your production farm. Uh, was it, uh, did it come from this commercial farm? I mean, the farm where you're doing the breeder the farm. Yes. Yeah, so the breeder farm, I reached a particular point. First of all, I had a really terrible experience where I ordered for chicks and the chicks didn't come for like a whole year. Someone took my money and the chicks didn't come for a whole year. So I had always harbored this idea of, uh, you know, doing a breeder farm. You understand? It's something that I always wanted to do and I had kept it at my, at my mind. And actually, when I started, bought this land and started this farm, it's because I wanted to do a breeder farm right here. But at a particular point, I had a friend who also had harbored the, the same exact idea of starting a breeder farm, but he had land, you understand? So after interacting and us interacting and, you know, discovering that we shared the same passion, we just decided to put our resources together and start a breeder farm. So that's how the breeder farm came to start. As we wind up, uh, any of your last message to somebody that is intending to start up a poultry farm. So if someone wants to start up a poultry farm, I just want to tell you that you just need to be intentional, mm. be focused, work really hard, and make sure that you avoid risk, yeah? You, you, you reduce the risk as much as possible. For me, the way I, I avoid risk is making sure people don't visit the farm, you understand? I don't mm. allow people to come to the farm because people carry diseases to the farm, mm. you understand? So keep them away. I understand that people will want to come and learn and all those kinds of things, and they'll think that you're mean, but it's okay. It's the price to pay for yes. you to succeed. So minimize the, miss, the risk as much as possible. Mm. So vaccinate your chickens. I mean, don't try to be like those guys who don't want to vaccinate your chickens. Mm. Vaccinate your chickens and also learn as much as possible to make sure that you get the best results. Thank you, Dr. Ari. It's a pleasure. It was an honor uh, visiting your farm. And thank you so much for deliberately sharing your information with the entire world. Ladies thank and you. gentlemen, we come to an end of this particular episode. I've been speaking to Dr. Daniel Masava, a retired doctor, now a proud farmer who is doing quite a number of things, including chicken farming, goat farming, cattle, production of different things, and so forth and so on. Please do follow him on his YouTube channel, Farm Up. He's also on Twitter at Dr. Daniel Masava. 
Don't forget to follow me at Dennis Duke UG, but also go to Sungura House and eat nice foods. In case you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Dr. Daniel will respond them on Twitter. Until then, see ya.